So I'm currently getting ready for the longest ride of my life, literally. 117 miles we're planning. And in the middle of that is a club ride. So the BBC versus GVCC, two different clubs, the Genesee Valley Cycling Club and the Buffalo Bicycling Club. We're gonna race each other in the middle of this 117 mile ride. So I'm gonna let you know what I'm planning on bringing for fuel and I'm going to bring you along for the ride and hopefully I don't bonk. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to start the morning with my normal routine, oat milk, latte, oatmeal for breakfast. I am bringing three bottles with 90 grams of carbs each. And then I am bringing two Martin solid bars. Each one of those has 40 grams each. I am bringing a pack of scratch gummies. Um, those I think are another 40 grams because I think there's two servings and there's 20 grams in each. Um, and then I'm bringing some um, salt tablets and all together that should be enough fuel. I don't know if it'll be necessarily enough water. Oh, you know what? I also have a extra 90 grams of carbs uh, to put back in water um, if I if we make a stop which we'll probably do a water stop uh, before the way back so um, if we're estimating I don't know five hours of riding today um, then that should be 90 grams an hour for all five hours so that's my oatmeal done um, we'll see how it goes I mean I might pick up some other extra food if I'm feeling low um, when we stop so looking forward to it i think it's going to be a badass ride it's supposed to be a beautiful day uh, should be a fun race against the gvcc so we'll see how it all goes i don't know whether i'm actually supposed to be racing in group one or group two normally i race in the a group with a bbc um, but i'm technically a cat four and i think we're separating by categories into group one and two is the four five so We'll see where they want me today. Um, they may shorten my ride slightly if I end up riding with that group, but I think it'll still be over a century. So um, that's what I'm aiming for because my longest ride outdoors is exactly 100 miles. So we'll see. So I've actually got a big announcement and this ride is a good one to talk about it on because it's actually my first real ride, but I am gonna be on a new team next year. So. The BBC team is awesome and uh, a really good kind of team to get your teeth cut on just uh, as far as being a part of a team. But I am moving to the project team, which is uh, sponsored by the East Aurora Racing Club. I had to cross a big intersection, didn't want to risk anything there. But I'm uh, going to be on project this coming season and uh, you've seen them in some of my videos. A few of my buddies have been on them. I ride with the project crew a lot already. The majority of them are based out of uh, North Buffalo where I live. So it kind of all works out really nicely and um, I'm really excited about the opportunity. So we'll see how it changes the season. And um, this is my first real ride with them as a team member so i'm um, really looking forward to it and like i said it's gonna be a big one so be perfect all right so i didn't take a ton of b-roll on the uh way to this ride i was more just thinking about uh the effort that this was going to take but let me tell you a little bit about this format this is very different than uh, one of our normal club races so it's GVC versus BBC. So completely forget about the teams as far as, you know, how I normally race on the BBC BBC team. The BBC is also an overarching club that is the main race club uh, in Buffalo and all the teams are kind of situated under that umbrella. Um, so whether you're not on a team at all, whether you are on the BBC team, whether you're on Project, whether you're on Shakluna, 
it doesn't really matter everybody who's in the bbc club um is on a team for this race and then everyone from gvcc uh, is the same and so i'll kind of point out uh, people as attacks are made and stuff but uh um, really, these these three guys to my right are all GVCC. The one in the orange on the front, the blue-eyed um, eyed racing is uh, GVCC, um, and then you've got this other uh, guy here um, who is GVCC as well. So it's a really interesting dynamic because there's a big group and everybody is on a team. So. Um, I was kind of coming into this thinking, you know, I'm already 45 miles in. Um, and if you look at the laps and stuff, the lap counter is a little off. Um, the total miles to the left is correct. So you can see that's how far in uh, to this long ride, which ended up being 110 miles. Um, I'm, I'm about halfway into that. And then the lap counter, we actually did five laps of this race. Um, and the the upper miles which usually that yellow bar ends when I finish the race is not going to be correct because of how this race was structured in, in the middle of this ride but um, you know we're uh, I think a lap in right now of the five laps there's a couple of little attacks and um, this one GVCC rider goes on this hill Mike Maywalt goes i see him go and i see this gap open and i figure mike's really strong he'll stay with him um, i'm gonna let that go i'm trying to conserve knowing i have to make it home uh, but also knowing that this is uh you know pretty early in the race so we kind of let those guys go and my thought is um you know as long as every little attack uh at least has an equal number of bbc guys uh, with it I'm gonna let it go and if it doesn't I am going to try to even things up so with Mike going I wasn't worried about it um, we're gonna jump ahead a bit because we just kind of ride this and we really just let those guys go all right jumping ahead a little bit um, I'm kind of on the front but I'm doing 150 watts um, we're, we're going pretty slow and i'm not going to be the one that's going to set a high pace uh, again just in the back of my mind i know i've got a big day ahead of me so i'm just kind of playing the game and um, if i'm going to be on the front i'm going to be under 200 watts that's just kind of my goal we've got a attack here from a really strong rider uh, gvcc you've probably seen him before on some of my other races and i was a, about to go with that and then i see jim go um and so I'm like, all right, good. Jim's strong. He'll be able to stick with him. Not worried about it. And uh, so the same sort of deal as, uh, as when Mike went off. I see this guy um, putting a little bit of an effort, and I just want to make sure that I'm on his wheel. So I, you know, bring up the watts a little bit and stick on him. And, uh, you know, th this is going to be my goal. So now I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on him because I know that, that he's strong and, uh, you know the other some of the other strong riders are gone so now i'm going to kind of mark um mark a couple of guys from gvcc who i know uh, could make uh, a move if they want to uh, you know unbalance things a little bit so we've got one attack here and i'm uh, thinking i'm gonna go i ramp up to like 400 and then i see pete come through so i back it off and uh you know this is kind of <laughs> kind of this game that i was playing again this is it's just such an interesting dynamic because there's so many team members although at this point we're we're running low on the pbc um gvcc definitely had more guys in uh this is i ended up writing the b field um so they had a lot more guys and uh you know i i'm just trying to play this game so um, we let them go, and uh, I think we, we bring them back in a little bit, but I'll, I'll skip ahead to that. So we haven't brought them quite back yet, um, and uh, some of the strong GVCC guys kind of line up, and um, they kind of attack through this corner. And I'm just thinking, you know, as long as I'm watching them and I'm able to keep on a wheel and in the draft, um, there's no reason for me to 
really do anything again i i know that uh the guys that are are off the front in these little kind of uh each one a little duet breakaway they're strong the bbc guys that are with them i think they can they can win out of those groups so i'm very content just uh staying back here and um seeing what'll happen and you know this could have been dangerous because you know if, if it wasn't all the strong guys on the front here for gvcc what they should have done was some of the strong guys should have gotten at the back of the pack and um, attacked really hard from the back and i would have missed it but really all of the strong guys that i need to keep an eye on are staying in front of me so that i can easily keep an eye on them and uh they're letting me draft them so um i'm very content being uh being back here um we got brian uh, to my right he's one of the the last few bbc guys that are still with me in this group um so you know the two of us are just are sitting back here um taking advantage of the draft and honestly that may have been a moment um, where i could have attacked this group and maybe should have done so because um you know looking back at this point because there's so many more of them um it would be really hard for me to really win out of this group um so maybe i should have tried to jump up to pete and um worked with them to try to stay away i don't know um maybe i should have even gone a lot earlier and tried to get with jim um but uh again i think a lot of the uh long ride and i don't know if i can handle too much <laughs> intensity is uh, is playing in my mind during uh, this day but i was actually feeling really good you know we're already 50 miles in and you know i had a few efforts in the legs and um i'm feeling great and a lot of that i think uh, comes down to fueling properly um but we are bringing uh bringing this last group that attacked back right now and uh you know this might have been a good opportunity to counterattack. um we are going pretty fast though because it's a downhill so it would have been maybe a tough place to attack um I did slow up for a second but you know we're going 30 miles per hour and right um, jeremy's on the front he's strong um we got a right turn coming up And uh, I'll skip ahead a little bit after this turn. I don't think anything major happens here. But with the, um, the amount of people that GVCC still had in our group compared to um, BBC, which I believe was just myself, Pete, and Brian at this point, um, I would have expected them to counterattack us like crazy to just get little groups um, of people off and then you know they could probably meet up and work together but uh, you know the, the three of us wouldn't be able to continue counterattacking but you know with this being the the B group um, you know I don't know if there was as much strategy um, really thought through that so you know I'm, I'm totally happy with it but um i'm starting to think you know what how what could we do in this um to maybe get away i'd like to get across to to jim um or at least get away from this group so that we could um you know have a better chance of of having uh, bbc guys just in that top taking up all the spots in the top uh five basically uh, or top top 10 i mean we got obviously there's there's two gvcc guys off the front um with our guys so uh, i'm just trying to think that through and and honestly i think at some point i pull over to pete and i tell him that what i want uh, to do is have the two of us just start counterattacking. Um, i tell him that i'm gonna drift to the back and if he can be on the front to just keep 
things moving so that people don't come around him, but not, you know, too fast um, that I can't attack. Um, I'm going to attack through, and then I don't want him to follow. Obviously, I, told, I tell him to uh, kind of grab onto the back of the group, and then when they catch me, if he's got the energy to, uh, to try to throw a little counterattack, and I'm going to do the same thing, try to jump onto the back, and then when they catch him, I'm going to attack through. So um, I kind of whispered that to him at some point um, when the two of us kind of drift to the back, and uh, that was the plan. Um, and I don't know if I really had a chance. I didn't really get to talk to Brian about it. Again, he was the, uh, I think, one of the only uh, BBC guys that was left, but um, uh, he kind of helps out as well, and um, you know, I think he realizes what's going on. So let's skip ahead. Okay, so at this point, Pete and I have discussed what's going on. Pete, Brian, and I are all near the front right now. Um, this is really the fourth out of five laps, um, and so the the goal is like I tell Pete, I'm going to drift to the back. You just keep a steady pace on the front, and they kind of just like let him roll off a little bit. Um, now, Brian, stay with Pete. Make I. Sure you do the work. I kind of tell Brian, like, oh, if they're going to let the gap open, just kind of stay on on Pete's wheel. Um, and so they kind of line up. You know, I start drifting to the back, and uh, I'm then going to try to find an opportunity to, to jump the group and uh, see if I can get a gap. And unfortunately, I don't have my back camera for this race. Normally, when I race, I take my saddlebag off and I can put my rear camera on. Uh, but with this being such a long ride today, I definitely didn't want to take the chance of not having my saddlebag uh, in case I punctured. So no back camera, um, which is a bummer because I really would love to have seen what kind of space I was able to make on some of these attacks and uh, how hard people were working to bring me back but uh, I just have to take people's word for it and uh, you know it sounded like I did a good job <laughs> alright so now I'm looking for an opportunity there was some debris on the right there and I see Pete's on the left which is kind of a bummer he should have stayed to the right so I had some room to get to the left there they're kind of blocking so i can't attack him and brian are next to each other and they're taking up too much room um but then i see some room on the right side um and i'm just waiting for a good opportunity but um yeah ideally him and brian would have been lined up on one side um getting all the gbcc guys behind them um so that i'd have plenty of room to come around so people are kind of fanned out a little bit and uh, you know we're not working too hard. There's a little hill here, but 17 miles per hour. <clears throat> and so I attack hard, um, and I bring it up. I come over the front at 23 miles per hour. So I'm going six miles per hour uh, faster than the people at the front, who uh, you know again they've been keeping their GBC. See a lot of the stronger guys were at the front, <clears throat> and I'm uh, pretty quickly able to get it to. Uh, 29 miles per hour and then I just kind of drift back down and hold it this is a bit of an incline here <coughs> excuse me so you know I, I think it was a good effort I think it was um, well placed coming from the back like that and um, I know it made them do the work um, not I, I was a little surprised to see Pete come over me first um, so either he should have been on the back of that group um, or he should have attacked over me hard to make them um, do the work. But I think he was trying to set me up again to do another attack, but um, I think he could have uh, taken the opportunity to you know, really draft them up to me and then attack over the top to... Uh, going to keep those those constant counterattacks going and, and keep the uh, GVCC guys working um, to stay on us. 
I know he was he was getting pretty close to uh, to blown though at this point. He was like, you know, I want to I'll do what I can, but um, I don't know if he was able to really put in heart attacks. So I get it. Um, all right, so I'm kind of biding my time. My heart rate's uh, coming back down, and uh, I'm trying to get all these guys um, in front of me so I can again um, attack hard from behind and uh, not give them enough time to grab on my wheel. Let's see how long it takes me. I probably should have attacked sooner. The, the quicker you can string those attacks together, if you're able to... Oh, you know what? I was waiting for this turn. But the quicker you can string them together, like, yeah, I get it. You're probably still hurting, but everyone else is hurting. And again, if you can come over with that speed differential, uh, Pete shouldn't have gone to the right there. I tried to put in a little effort, and then I wasn't sure how far he was going to go over. And now I'm kind of like in the middle of the group and already in the wind. I should have reset, I think. Um, good 900 watts. That's not bad for being 60 miles in and um, already having a couple attacks. Holding good watts for a bit. And again, I wish I had that back camera. But I'm moving. I I do think that I should have maybe reset after that turn and uh, really come from behind again. Um, there's also that little bit of downhill there, so you know, maybe they can. It's going to help them pick up their speed, and the speed differential is not quite as great. Um, but it's a, it's rolly. It's a lot of rolling here, so. Who knows? I don't think they're they're almost on me. Obviously, my my watts drop pretty low, so I think that's because they uh, were about to get back on, and um, I wanted to save a bit. Heart rate's pretty high too, but I think generally I'm feeling pretty good. Um, so again, Pete comes over me first, and he should have slammed it here because he actually does get a little bit of a gap, even just rolling up soft. Um, and then obviously they jump, they jump on him. But again, if if we're making them work every time, and then I attack through again, they're only going to be able to jump on so many of those attacks. I think they're hesitant to. Uh, to fill in here because of what I've been doing they're kind of getting tired of it so they're you know thinking um, that if the two of these guys get away they're they're fine with that which makes sense to me um, so if he wants to pull for a little bit that's okay he kind of filters in Let's see, I know we've, uh, we've got a couple more attacks here, so we'll I'm just skip ahead a little bit. It's funny, I actually know that I'm pretty marked. Um, I think because of just the YouTube videos, I'm not that strong, but uh, <laughs> uh, Jeremy puts in a really good attack to the right, and um, I think Pete was yelling out right, right, which is was really helpful, or maybe it was Brian. I don't know if Brian's still with us. Um, but Pete gets on there, so I don't have to, which is awesome. Um, Huge props to him. I know he was already tired. Um, but my thought right here is, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to get with Pete and Jeremy and maybe, you know, if, if the three of us can get away, then, uh, you know, that's better odds for the remaining BBC guys left. But I'm kind of yelling out to Pete to, to pick it up, um, and he doesn't. So... I guess I kind of use that as my counterattack, because um, I don't think the guys followed me immediately, and um, I'm still keeping it on a little bit. Let's see how long I, I put this effort in. No back camera is a really bummer here. Wow, 
Odds are coming down, so I'm, I think that they're they're probably pretty close to catching on here. It didn't quite work um, the way that one was intended. But that was my thought process. You know, if I could get away with Pete and one other guy, then it's at least two BBC guys, two GBC, C, and, uh, you know, that's better than being in a pack of, and I don't know how many guys were left, like probably like seven or eight, um, and only Pete and I from the BBC. So, um, yeah, the odds, odds are not in our favor right now. So, um, they're on me, and I'm just going to easy uh, pedal on, until somebody else wants to take the front. So uh, Pete's come around. Um, you know, there's kind of a group coming through. We had just come through. This is the, the final lap now. And I think at this point, um, Pete had kind of told me he's, he doesn't think he has anything left in him. Um, I was hoping he'd still be able to hold that wheel, but I think he kind of looks at me as if to say like you know i i just don't don't quite have much left which is fine um but then that makes me realize that i i gotta make sure that uh you know nobody else gets away i i want to be there at the end with everybody that that's in this group even if it's yeah so pete and i are kind of talking that uh Maybe we stop attacking, but we uh, don't let anybody go. But I'm kind of, while saying that, realizing that, that we're <laughs> letting somebody go. So he's attacking up this hill, and um, i got to put in a pretty big effort to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. So I grab onto his wheel, and uh, and then we're sitting in for a bit. So I've been on the front, but I'm keeping it under 200. I hear Pete yell, right, right, right. So I know there's something coming. Um, this one probably hurt more than any attack throughout the day. Um, it, it didn't take me that long to close it, but it just, you know, I, I could tell it was just one of the, the last few efforts that I've got for the day. Um, you know, I'm pretty close to to a thousand watts there um, after 66 miles and and a bunch of other attacks. So um, luckily, I, I grabbed on um, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm hurting, but I I know I just got to hold on. And again, I I'm not planning on attacking anymore out of this group, but I'm sure as heck not going to let anything go from this group. So that's where we are right now so just a tiny bit further i'm just starting to catch my breath and uh, really good attack from the guys here uh, what's i mean they should have been doing this more often just m more attacks like this but they kind of fill in f for me um because if it was just jeremy that attacked he would have gotten a gap but because two other guys followed him by the time he passed me and I'm able to respond, I'm able to get onto their wheels. Um, so luckily I'm still here, but again, if it was just Jeremy or, or one of these other guys, um, I, I think, I mean, they're, even if they don't get away, I'm working a heck of a lot harder than uh, I just did to, to get on to the third wheel. Um, so, you know, and a lot of that is just, you know, we're we're newer riders, but, um, but yeah, the fact that they have numbers, I mean, they should be attacking um, over the top, you know, one person at a time, just softening me up, so that, you know, if they did that all race, I probably would just die, uh, you know, to the point where a bunch of them could get away. Um, you know, I can't chase everything back myself. But uh, I pretty much did. And the way that, the way that they did it, um, again, they they were chasing teammates a little bit, so um, it helped me out. So I'm okay um, not being all the way on the front um, and getting some draft. Um, 
and being able to keep an eye on some of the strong guys too. So, um, see if anybody puts in an effort after this turn, which is often the case. Really? I'm to surge a little bit there, but nothing major. All right, let's see what happens next. All right, uh, I spoke too soon. Uh, just shortly after that, Jeremy attacks again. Um, I, I think out of GVCC, he just raced the best. Um, you know, I, I know he's getting a lot stronger this this off season, so. Um, in uh, in the 2024 season he's uh he's going to be a force but um you know if his if his attacks were were a little bit stronger i would have really struggled just struggled um just because he knew when to do them he he waited there was a little lull there you know the front slowed down and he attacked over the top so he did that a number of times um and again that that other one um kind of got ruined unfortunately by his teammates that filled in um, but this, uh, this just most recent one, um, was good. He went over and, um, made me do the work. So, um, kudos to him. All right. So this is just a little bit further up and this is the last corner. And, um, so I attack. So my thought here was I actually saw somebody up in front of us and, um, I thought it was a red Jersey. I thought it might be Jim. And so I thought, Oh shoot! If Jim um, fell off that other rider that he was with, um, you know, maybe I can get up to Jim and we can work together to finish this out. As I got closer, I realized that was not the case. Uh, he looked back. Uh, this was—I um, don't know if, if he was a rider from the A group or that got dropped previously. But I get close, and I realize that's not what's going on so i kind of <laughs> dropped that attack so that was uh, unfortunate that i kind of wasted one of my last matches there right before the finish um but had that been jim i think that that would have been the play um get up to him yell out to him work together and then it's the two of us and uh you know i was able to get a bit of a gap there um and i would have just kept on the power if if uh if I had a teammate to work with at the end here, but so now I'm stuck on the front, which is unfortunate. Um, and I've got, uh, you know, all the, all the strong GBCC guys kind of lined up behind me here. I am not, uh, the strongest sprinter either. So I'm kind of in my head, like, what do I do here? I have my, I've got a bit of a strong, maybe like a one minute. So I'm thinking maybe I can go early and kind of catch them um, unawares and uh, maybe get there. But the other thing I don't really think through is that there is a uphill here. So it's going to make it a lot longer of a sprint than I'm really thinking about. So I, I went way too early is basically uh what it boils down to um had i waited till we crested the hill i might have done okay because i'm still in front here uh, and right now is when they come ahead in front of me so i just went too early um bummer i got third out of the group um which you know honestly i'm i'm happy with for the amount of people that they had and the fact that I'm 70 miles deep, I'm good with that. Yeah, so, um, and uh, Mike had gotten second and uh, Jim got third. So um, we didn't do too bad uh, in the front of the race, but, you know, they just had more guys. So I think overall uh, GVCC did better in the Bs and overall they took it in the A's as well. Um, we've got some... Uh, footage from the finishes from the A group. Um, I believe Hakan uh, Sheffield took the uh, first place there.
successful ride today, 110 miles, longest ride to date. And now I am home and my daughter is making brownies. This house smells amazing. And I am helping my wife uh, with her earrings. She has a uh, business that's called City Girls Designs. It's her and my daughter make these clay earrings and they are awesome. Check them out. Uh, if you're a man and you don't wear earrings, buy some for a female companion. Um, and if you are a lady who likes earrings, buy them for yourself. You deserve it. <laughs>